Hi there, everybody. It's Chesra. Uh, this photo really evokes a sense of great dread and fear in me. And it should evoke something like that in you as well. It's a photograph of a munitions dump in Udmurtia in central Russia in 2011. And I might have the pronunciation wrong, but the rest, I'm pretty sure, is accurate because I got these photos from a really very good researcher who has since died of natural causes. But this was a remarkable man who shared some of my concerns about World War Three. Concerns I note America doesn't have. So this is a controlled detonation of a nuclear weapon. What you'd have to understand is the incredible heat and also the acrid smell. It smells like hell. It looks like hell. It feels like hell. Nuclear weapons are not a Hollywood trick. They are very real. The threat of nuclear war is very high. So I knew last year I got word from an irreproachable source in regard to information that the conflict in Ukraine was likely to go global and escalate to nuclear war by about this time this year. How did I come to get such information? I studied war. I did it in a rogue way where I went and I spoke to people in a way that other people don't seem to have done. And so I really got to the bottom of a lot of things and that excluded me from a wonderful career that I had envisioned for myself in at the UN in some sort of a peacekeeping. <laughs> Once you, once you know about peacekeeping, uh, NATO style, you, you never again delude yourself about a such life. If you've got a conscience, if you've got a conscience, I mean, if you don't have a conscience, you can do whatever you like. Uh, the, the world is your oyster indeed. Under what circumstances will Russia, uh, you know, provoke a preemptive strike, a preemptive nuclear strike. There are set conditions. You should not be guessing or hazarding at this information. So what I have done on my Patreon account, it's all in one place, and you don't have to pay behind the paywall because Lord knows I know how terrified so many Americans are of money going to the third world. Not to fear, you can go and access it for free not that that is much a bait when you come to serious uh, issues like this. So I want to um, read you something. And this is from Carl Sagan in 1995. And it was a prophecy. prophecy. It was absolutely prophetic. I, I am a huge fan of Carl Sagan. It reads, the science is more than a body of knowledge. It is a way of thinking. I have a foreboding of an America in my children or grandchildren's time. When the United States is a service and information industry, service and information. When nearly all the key manufacturing industries have slipped away to other countries. When awesome technological powers are in the hands of the very few and no one representing the public interest can even grasp the issues. When people have lost the ability to set their own agendas or knowledgeably question those in authority, when clutching our crystals and nervously consulting our horoscopes, our critical faculties in decline, unable to distinguish between what feels good and what is true we slide almost without noticing back into superstition and darkness 
So that was Carl Sagan, who was a scientist. I've, I've come to realize that you can't simply say things like Moses or Carl Sagan and assume that people know what you're talking about. Uh, many of them have never heard of these figures. So that was a premonition from a scientist about America. I'm not American. I haven't actually been to America. I was at one point due to grow up in America and I thank thank God repeatedly on my knees because my soul is more valuable to me than this world. And so my view is it's better to be in a dangerous place and have your soul intact than be in a place, yes, where you are clutching your crystals and nervously glancing up at your horoscope and incapable of telling the difference uh, between what is true and what feels good. So what is true is a nuclear war is a possibility. The, the possibility is when you put too many dangerous weapons on the Russian border and the Russian border is set to expand in the next few days with what the West calls annexations, what the rest of the world calls referendums, where people in key areas of the Ukraine voted to return to Russia. And so what Putin said is that as soon as those votes are tallied in the next two or three days, 28th, and overwhelmingly a vote to return, and it doesn't matter whose side you're on, it doesn't matter whose side you're on. What matters is reality. It doesn't matter what feels good, feels nice. Uh, it matters what is true. So the reality is that these countries are going to be sovereign Russian territory in a few days. And that means when you have you support the Ukrainian forces in attacking sovereign Russian territory, you must expect a strike back. Now I see a lot of warnings, or we are going to show Putin that he dares to use nuclear. And it, they are made on the assumption, they are made on the assumption, alarming ignorance, that Putin will use them in Ukraine. I put it to you that Putin will not use them in Ukraine. His mother is Ukrainian. Where Putin will use it uh, is where you can go through my blogs and, and videos where I put together all the circumstances in which Russia will strike first. There will be a preemptive strike from Russia. It's interesting that all the simulations so, uh, show Russia striking first. Why does Russia strike first? Is it a provocation? Yes, it is a provocation by the West. And the provocation is putting dangerous weapons on the Russian border that can penetrate to as a thousand kilometers, 500 kilometers into Russian territory. And the other provocation, of course, is you can't strike on Russian sovereign soil. Ukraine, you, you need to stop looking into this. Some country you're giving age to and understand it more realistically within the parameters of the Ukraine is a military base of the United States of America. So when Russia takes back its land from the United States of America and there are attacks by a, a, an army trained by the United States and weapons donated by the United States and the UK, then you need to understand how this is going to scale into a global conflict, just as I was warned. It's horrifying. This is horrifying. And no child deserves a future after something like this, because their parents, you know, instead of looking at facts, decide to go and consult. I don't know what are the omens. And I have had people saying to me, oh, I communed with God. And he's, there's no, there's no nuclear war. I communed, I commune. I mean, this is Carl Sagan, literally word for word. You can't trust your um, news 
it's drivel. It's drivel. This is a tetrapod. This is quite a, a considerably prestigious paper. It's, it's absolutely bizarre. There's no reality filtering through at all. And this is not a good sign. This is not a good sign uh, because even if this is arranged on some superior level, yeah, the dollar's gone because China, Russia, and Iran, no, no, India, China, Russia, and India, well, Iran, I'm sure, is with them as well now, and decided to stop using the dollar for petrodollar, petroleum trading. So the worth of the dollar is linked to its ability to buy oil, which was enforced by a lot of military bases. And I regret to have to inform you, but there's a hard eviction incoming of those military bases. There are over a thousand declared bases around the world. Mm -hmm. um, it's not war. It's a business model. It's not fascism. It's a death cult. Uh, so at least in these days, God bless them. These people actually went out and said something. Uh, today, Americans don't care because there's also this rapture kind of uh, Protestant delusional end times death cult fetishizing. Fetishizing. How am I saying that right? Yeah, fetishizing um, uh, and glorifying uh, destruction to this planet as as a means to edify yourself and be raptured up because magic jesus is going to come down and i put it to you that a magic jesus is not going to come down for you if you uh, go on a war like this what is more likely is that you are going to have to clean up after such a mess and your children's lives will be horror and hell uh there will be a a famine, there will be war, there will be plague, there will be everything that can possibly go wrong. There are no amounts of threats that will deter Russia from acting preemptively if the if uh, the situation merits it. And there is no other country in the world who expects Russia not to preemptively defend itself. A well, rational country. Again, the EU is occupied territory for the purposes of how um, the layout for World War Three that I reference in a sort of a more reality based model. So they are occupied by the United Kingdom and the United States and Canada. And since Jacinda Ardern has made such a gigantic nuisance of herself in the last few days, let's throw New Zealand onto that onto that heap as well yeah you are not going to avoid avoid it just by not looking at it avoid avoid got two words over there evade and avoid <laughs> and, and a great big void where a lot of people's brains should be um western hubris just remember you, you live over here it's not all that it's not all that it can break it can break. Uh, there have been terrible war crimes committed in the name of the United States this year in Ukraine and in other places. And that is, there is a reckoning on a national level. There is a karma payable on a national level as well. I've never been in a country, I've never lived in a country that has actively invaded other countries. I don't know what that is like. Uh, I can only say that my personal nature would be, I would be up in arms in a minority of one. And that's pretty much what I have been for a year. Uh, I just want to see, yes, so here's the West, letters of last resort. It, yes, she said, Elizabeth said, if she has to hit the, the, the Trident nukes, she will hit the Trident nukes. And you expect Russia to stand back and not strike first with all these threats that they are under. Also, it is never just Russia. It is Russia and China. They are in a no limits partnership in case it eluded you or the mainstream news didn't tell you this. 
it was one of the other warnings that I had is that it is never going to be just Russia if you go into head-on confrontation, China and Russia are together and you should uh, immediately disabuse yourself of any concepts that Russia and China are backwaters, backward little countries. Um, perhaps you should think about something called the, the Sarmat, S-A-R-M-A-T uh, missile, which is capable of carrying up to 10 nuclear warheads. You should also think about the submarine Belgorod, Belgorod uh, that can launch nuclear uh, warheads and it can also cause a tsunami which can take out the Atlantic or Pacific seaboard entirely. Massive tsunami. And this was, <clears throat> sorry, I'm still battling constant chest infections. Just bear with me. Yeah, uh, the, this, this happened at the Vostok Games, which was hardly reported on. It's a very significant event, actually, that Russia and China, uh, China uh, sailed a bunch of warships into the Sea of Japan and, you know, did this and must be very scary for people in Japan who are also occupied by the United States of America. And so they are between a rock and a hard place. Everybody is between a rock and a hard place. The people who have to say no to this insane war are Americans and the people who refuse to even engage that there is a war are Americans and they are consulting their horoscopes and touching their crystals and uh, thinking instead of researching and looking up reality. Um, this is a very interesting, interesting point. I don't think anybody in the West has noticed that there is a messianic quality to uh, Russia. And so among the crazy things that came out of the Kremlin, Pravda, it's just absolutely insane, is a report where they talk about how Russia is going to take on the godless heathens of the West. Yeah, I'm just reporting on what is being said. A lot of people who were pro-Russia assumed that Putin and Russia were against Queen Elizabeth II. Absolutely untrue. Do not put the ASS in assume. Don't put the ASS in assume. If you value your children's lives, I just want to see if there's anything else important that I need to draw your attention to. Yeah, there's no situational awareness. You just don't realize when the nukes go off, they go off into Western territory. So London, New York, yeah, all of these um, places, London and Washington especially, have been named as decision-making centers of the West. Uh, it's just tragic because you have the internet, you have so many ways to communicate, and yet the choice is to basically remain in ignorance. And to my eye, there is a degree of a sacrificing. It's what Carl Sagan said, that what, you sacrifice truth for what feels good. And then you end up throwing away your children and your grandchildren's futures before what is it amounts to Moloch worship. You ha can have a good time today. You're willing to throw your kids under the, the bus tomorrow. I find this to be highly immoral. If somebody can explain to me how this is not immoral, please do. I, I will willingly listen to my mind. This is. This is wickedness. Um, I, you know, the question is it is it is it malice? Never ascri ascribe to malice what should be ascribed to stupidity. 
And I will say that uh, I found a really, really brilliant quote today. I'm no fan of what's his name, Freud. However, um, in this case, he hit the nail on the head. And, and what he said over here, if this is not going to load up, yes, he said the, the, the first indication of stupidity is a complete lack of shame complete lack of shame so people will look you in the eye and shamelessly say to you um yeah nukes are like hollywood i don't care and like i got faith i got faith that the lord is, the the lord is not going to stop you know if, if 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 i take this thing and i drop it down the lord is not going to intervene on the laws of gravity in the same way if missiles are loaded warheads are loaded onto missiles which are then fired off a launch pad into a trajectory some of them go through space somebody some of them go more direct routes some of them take a scenic route around but these are actions so i don't expect god to come and remove from my hand this book on the lucifer effect how good people turn evil I, I i don't expect that to happen i expect if i'm holding the book and then i have to put the book down myself i don't have faith that the book is going to somehow remove itself from my hand and pack itself into the right place it's an absurd childish notion when i was a child i spoke as a child uh, but when i became a man I put away those childish things. I think that is a quote from Corinthians. I'm not really very great on uh, a scriptural text, but I found they actually very handy in summing up situations. So you now have to put away childish things. It, it, you should be ashamed that you don't know that your country is at war, where your country is at war, why your country is at war what the the risks are to your own children, that you don't know that your own petrodollar is on a time out, that you are waiting for a savior like Trump elections to come and save you all, that you aren't getting out in the streets and also that you aren't reaching out as part of humanity, that you're cutting yourselves off into this little bubble. Because this is the argument that has been made for depopulation, is there are not millions of people. There is one poorly formed consciousness with no sense of responsibility that exists outside of the collective, the collective, Jacinda Ardern, and the collective, collective, collective. So if you have no rights and no responsibilities, and your entire life is the result of nebulous, shadowy, bankers and jewish people and african people and chinese people whoever is not you um and it's not your fault and there's nothing you can do to alter your destiny well then you're part of the termite heap and so when the exterminator comes i suppose it's no big deal but it is a big deal isn't it i mean you you do care about your children don't you you do care now that it might be days away from war and a hard shutdown of your economy because they're just going to turn off the taps as jordan peterson pointed out just turn off the taps choke off the supply chain and america and the united kingdom the collective west goes into a hard economic backslide to hell and there will be no preparation and it'll be why is this happening to us and it is not happening to you you are doing it to yourselves uh, so Yes, there is a risk of uh, World War Three. It is extremely high. I have been trying to uh, raise the alarm for 12 months. <laughs> uh, yeah, clearly it's not much avail. Uh, now that your politicians are all speaking out against Russia and warning Russia, they're going to be consequences if they use nuclear weapons well i mean my god what what why 
what do you think Russia does not know about MAD? And then you have people saying idiotic things like, oh, no, there's no, no MAD. He would be that crazy. And uh, at this point, I, I wonder how, how crazy are you? Like, how, how do you how, how do you think you, you, there's no, never going to be war on your doorstep? There's never going to be reality invading your life. You're never actually going to have to face the consequences. You are never going to have to reap what you have sown. And this is absurd. You cannot be a grown up adult and tell me you do not know that your country is at war with absolutely everybody all the time, nonstop. And you know nothing about it and you can't do anything about it. Because if I can do something about me, who was born in a place you don't even know exists, um, Namibia, you don't even know it exists. You don't know anything about my family. And yet here I am haranguing you and telling you what you must do and what you must say to avert this war. Silence is consent. It is your war. It is one hundred percent not the elites not some strange people it is you dear western collective it is you you have done this to the world and yourselves and so what you have to do now is all hands on deck work very 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 hard to end this cataclysm because you know what those little rocky places over here and then there's america they can just lob a lot of missiles this has been explained to me to your cia not not anyone else that they would use um planetary timings and alignments which they do when they launch like a titan they they use uh gravitational fields from different planets and so on to yeah, get the um the ship out there and, and head it at the right speed to the right place and so they can also use uh volcanic uh lines and fault lines and also drill points where there's been a lot of drilling and the idea then would be to if you're going to use that amount of radiation with minimal fallouts the rest of the world you basically want to implode america in onto itself and down into the salt water because the salt water deals with radiation more effectively you know Fukushima, things like that so yes I, I understand that there has been no situational awareness. Well, that can change right now. You can go and look up all these things and there are many wonderful, uh, I, I refer to uh, people I, whose, whose work I trust uh, who are accurate. Don't look at uh, CNN or Tucker Carlson or anything like that. They don't know what they're talking about. Also, uh, nobody cares what America thinks. If, the, if it goes nuclear, Russia, will fire first they will not fire on ukraine they will use other methods maybe some tactical nukes some hypersonic whatever you have no defenses against hypersonic you have no defenses so you are throwing your children into hell and i don't know why you're doing it I'm going to leave it over there. Uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Chesra signing out.